Okay, so one or two of you know about this already. I am not a disinterested party. My company, Embercosm, has been involved with Parallela right from the beginning. We've done the GNU tool chain. Um, Parallela is a multi-core floating point chip, but it is specifically designed for embedded use, so it is very low power. Um, and that is what differentiates it from a standard GPU. It has about the equivalent performance of the top end of NVIDIA's GPU range, but the current <coughs> chip burns just 2 watts, uh, delivers 26 gigaflops. Now, this chip's been around for a while. Uh, we've been using one over the summer for some research we'll publish on how compilers affect power consumption of range of processors. But if you want one today, it costs about $10,000. It's a terribly custom board. Um, it's been aimed at the defense market and one or two other high value markets. It's been developed on a shoestring. You may have seen an article in EE Times last year about a startup in America that had developed a, a multi-core chip to production silicon for just $2 million, when conventional wisdom is it takes $50 million. That company was Adaptiva, the people behind this chip. They've always taken a, an unusual view towards funding. It's not a good time to try and raise money for chip startups from the venture capital community. They've looked at people like ICERA, which was successful, but it took $220 million of investment and only yielded a $360 million sale after nearly 10 years. And VCs don't like that sort of return. So it's unfashionable to fund chips. What they've done for this round of funding, they've had about two or three million in these traditional investment funding. They've recognized that to really hit the big market, they've got to get mass production. And the way to do it is to go down the Raspberry Pi route. And they were very much inspired by Raspberry Pi. And get this up to the mass production, <coughs> where instead of selling a few boards at $10,000, they sell thousands of boards at $99. And to do that, they need enough investment to make a $99 multi-core board. And they've gone to Kickstarter. It's a multi-core silicon chip project on Kickstarter. They're trying to raise three quarters of a million dollars over 30 days. If you contribute, I think it's $99, actually a bit more if you're outside the US, $120, you will get one of the first boards. It'll give you an ARM, two ARM Pro cores and 16 Epiphany cores on a chip. Um, it'll give you 26 gigaflops and uh, it will draw two watts. Um, two watts? Two watts, which is not bad. If, if you applied that sort of technology to Blue Jean, the current top 500, number one, Instead of drawing eight um, megawatts, it would draw one megawatt, okay? So it's extremely low power, um, and therefore it's feasible to put it on a small car without any fancy cooling and so forth. Um, so we're a big backer of the project. We have a commercial vested interest in succeeding, but a couple of thousand other people have also backed it. I'd encourage you to look at it. The current funding is to aim to get this 26 gigaflop 16 core chip out on a $99 board. There is a stretch goal which is to do the 64 core chip which delivers you 90 gigaflops in under 5 watts um, for $199 and that would also be an exciting board. So have a look at the project, there's the Kickstarter page, you can find out more. If you want to know more about it just ask me because I've been heavily involved for a long time. What do you do with the board when you got it? Like, What sort of software do you run on these things? It, the the um, Epiphany itself is bare metal. There's not a huge amount of memory on each processor. You're going to run C, not C++ on them. <coughs> it has its own proprietary interconnect, which is partly how it gets the performance and power. Um, but the two ARM cores will run a host operating system, and yeah, I yeah. presume it'll be a flavor of Linux. I haven't actually looked into that in detail. Sure. Basically, to drive yeah. the pros multi-core. What do you do? It seems that that's a zinc core. Uh, Sorry? 
from the pictures that I've seen, it's a Cortex A9 dual Cortex A9. I think, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I can't yeah. remember, it's something like that. That's, that's, the, that's the CPU that we did ECOS for. Yeah, but that bit's boring though. You can go and buy a dual core A9 you know, down the shop yeah. for $5 or something. What do you do with the, the fancy stuff? Like what, well, one, what algorithms are you running a through? A good question, thing? and I think one of the things, one of the drivers behind this is Adaptiva's recognition that the only way you're going to find out just what you could do with multi-core floating point is if you get it to the wider community. We put this up, one of the first things that came out of the UK open source hardware user group was this is the solution to the software defined radio problem. Because we've tried to do it on Raspberry Pi and it hasn't got enough power. Put this alongside a Raspberry Pi and suddenly you've got the signal processing power to actually do proper software defined radio. So that's one application that's come out of the blue that they haven't thought of. We are using uh, signal processing in the radar. Yep. The radar, the sonar, in the submarines. We have this kind of... Uh, uh, the customer asked uh, us to provide a uh, low power system with a lot of gigaflops for signal treatment, for sonar. Okay, no, that's the use of the chip. I'm talking about the board. What am I going to do with that board that's cool? Right. Well, I've given you one, haven't I? Pass around the table. What would you do if you have 26 gigaflops of floating power performance plugged into the side of your laptop? Right. You can mine bitcoins. That's a popular one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's pay for it. Yeah, we'd, we'd I'm talking about floating point. Uh, Speed up open resource uh, simulations. Uh, they're not very floating point. But uh, yeah, you can it's probably still go pretty good. I should say, though it's, though it's floating point, it does have an integer processor on there. So it's a dual, each core is dual issue. And one of the, my colleague Jörn Renneker isn't here, we, we didn't bring him with us, but he actually did the, G, the GCC, and he's actually got the scheduling, so it will schedule interleaf, integer and floating point instructions, so you can have half a cycle per instruction execution. Um, and he'll do that on each core. And um, we have some, one of the reasons you've got quite such an impressive core mark is because of the tricks that Jörn has pulled in the GCC scheduling. It's going to be total overkill, but I want to drive a rep crap with this. Well, yeah, what can you do with a rep crap? Yeah, exactly. Like, I just don't understand what, what people like us are doing with this thing. Like, fair enough if you're in the military and need low power, sort of DSP or, or whatever. You can I, never I just have don't understand the application for me to sit You can home never have too much computing thing. power. You can if it's floating point, because like, there's not that much you can do with it, I would have thought. Well, well you could do that. much. There's enough or too little. <laughs> I'm not even sure there's enough, but anyway, that's me. Uh, but, but the thing is, we might find applications uh, that require more than you get generally today. Uh, we're just starting to move into the high performance parallel computing era with uh, things like, uh, what is it called, the Creative Labs and uh, yep. Z Labs? Z Labs, yeah. yeah, what used to be a Creative, yeah. The, um, well, it's owned by Creative, but it was developed independently, I believe. Yeah, it's a big merger of 3D labs and all sorts mm. of people, yeah. Um, I mean, there's all sorts. I mean, there are applications in the financial sector for doing, you know, complex derivatives analysis in the market. Um, you know, people keep on coming up. But that's the whole point of saying, if you make these $10,000 boards, there's a handful of people going to think, what could I do with them? If you make them $99 boards, hey, I can buy one and just see what could I do with it. And if it ends up Bitcoin mining, so I've made a bit of money. say a few words about the approach the guys have to, you know, openness. And yeah, this, so the, yeah, it's good. But, uh, the reason I'm talking here is it's a very open approach. They're not releasing the Verilog, but they're releasing just about everything else. So interestingly, they said, look, if we get to $500,000 in the first week, will release all the internal architectural documentation. And they didn't get that far. They said, oh, hell, no, we're committed to openness. We'll release them anyway. So all the architectural documents there. It's not like Raspberry Pi, where Broadcom have suddenly said, oh, yes, we're open, but we've decided to keep all the architectural specs behind. So you, no one else can program up the GPU. This is the opposite approach. It's saying, no, we're completely open from the system to the software level, the only thing that's kept proprietary at the moment is the actual very long source. Any more questions? Um, the programming of the calculation course, is that just uh, a highly optimizing C or is it OpenCL or something? So they, they, what's interesting is they've, they've 
got an OpenCL implementation. OpenCL doesn't fit terribly naturally. And in fact, one of the things that's come out from people is saying, why haven't you put Erlang on here? But they've done an OpenCL implementation. And interestingly, I can't remember the name of the company, but they've gone to a company that, unlike other OpenCL implementations, has done it as a GPL implementation. So it's not just open, it's free. It's a true copyleft implementation. And that is part of their commitment to saying, no, we are really serious about open source to the extent we'll take something like OpenCL, which is on a permissive license, and actually put it on a true copyleft license for our purposes. So you can do it in OpenCL. I have to say that all the interesting stuff actually tends to be when you go down to the bare metal and um, you know, drive your key. You it tends to be, but the point of OpenCL is to bring it from optimized for specific graphics cards to actually render independent. Of course, yes. And so, so hence the reason. You've got OpenCL. And it'll be interesting. You know, I'm sure someone will do Erlang fairly soon. Uh, I'd like to see something along those lines. Erlang uh, XC or... Uh, yeah, other people have talked about XC, and we had a bit of a debate online about whether... XC is a bit too proprietary because it's just... Well, XC believes it's in a, in a CCML Occam sort of X-core sort of world. I'm not sure how well it would fit on this particular hardware model. But, hey, if, if, you, if you've got a card, someone can try it and see if it works. I mean, this man knows all about XC, so... You know. It's probably a better fit than Colorful. Yeah. But anyway, things like that will happen if they reach the goal. I mean, if, if a thousand yeah. people, uh, several thousand people get a board, yeah. then obviously somebody's going to try and like, I mean, this For what it's worth, you've sold uh, me on this. Good. I'm getting at least right. So the interesting <laughs> thing is, it's a 30-day raise. They're trying to raise 750,000. You can see they're just behind halfway on the money and just over halfway on the time. They're just going to miss. So we really want to try and accelerate for the last 14 days and get that last bit of money because it will be it will be a tragedy if on this thing they'll get to about six hundred and twenty thousand. I think it's time for my third blog post on this subject. Excellent, excellent. So So how otherwise can the open course community help this? Talk about it. I mean I think it would be great, Johan Michael, if we could get something on the open course website, because I think this is uh, it's not open course, but it's very close to what we try and achieve. And I think if we can Publicity-wise. Publicity is what matters. Interestingly, it's had a, from what I've seen, it gets a warmer reception in Europe. America, the American electronics industry is so depressed mentally up here, they don't believe in themselves anymore. Well, it can't be possible, it's all vaporware. No, we've got them here. These are real things. I've got photos on the machine of this thing running. Uh, you the Europeans have been much more positive. Sorry? Can you yes. simulate a risk on it? That's an interesting exercise. No, we we try one. Can't I'd we? be interested in uh, adapting, let's say, very later to generating a parallel program. That would be very yeah, nice. Yeah, that would be yeah. All sorts of things you could do on there. Yeah, what? Yeah, how, how fast could you yeah run Icarus Verilog with a little parallelization? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions? Is there any actual guarantee that uh, what you <coughs> say? No, it can be achieved on the rather small amount of money. So remember, this is, and uh, this is a good question. It, it's on Kickstarter rules, so either they get all the money or they get nothing. Yeah. Um, it's not to build the chip. The chip exists. Okay. We've got one sitting on a lab so in it's Bristol to University. To it, it's to make the board, and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to build a board for a chip that is well characterized doesn't seem to me at all impossible. I mean, they did a Raspberry Pi on, you know, a twentieth of that money, so... Okay. Um, so why do they need 20 times that money? Well, they, I mean, they they bear in mind that when you invest, you are actually getting a board. So <coughs> some of this is going to go back out, you know, actually producing, there's a, there's a production run to be done, which is going to take some of the money. Um, it's also not a Raspberry Pi, it is an epiphany, so it's, it's a bit more complex than a standard ARM chip. Um, and thirdly, of course, there is the, exactly the question, how can you be confident you deliver? Well, you actually do go and raise enough money. You know, the mo worst thing you can do with investment is not to ask for enough money, because then trying to get the last 10% is awfully hard. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they have, they have gone for something that they are absolutely confident they deliver. We've worked with them for four years, and they're an incredibly gifted team. There's only four of them, and Andreas Olofsson, the CEO, is really the design brains behind it. And they produce stuff. Their chip worked first time, 
and some of you have seen some of the talks we've done on the developing the tool, GNU tool chain before they developed silicon. We developed the GNU tool chain against the Verilog. And we found, they reckon, 50 to 60 bugs in the Verilog from the GCC regression. But it meant when the chip came back, the processor worked first time. And they're on third generation silicon on their three million funding. And they've actually, well, they've actually got the prototypes of the fourth. They've got the first samples of the fourth generation, which is 28 nanometer silicon, which is the 64 core processor. Uh, the interconnect uh, in it, is it uh, unrooted like green arrays, or uh, does it have uh, internal switching in between processes? Uh, now, there, I'd ha I have to say I'm not sure. Uh, I, I can't remember. It is their own proprietary design of how you do uh, the switching. It is very, one thing that's quite interesting is that logically, it has very simple memory handling, so it's logically one address space. With the, it's a four gig address space, potentially 4,000 <coughs> processors in the array, each of them having a one gig slot in the memory. So each processor can address the memory of any other processor, but it does carry a fairly hefty penalty. You want to take some care to make sure your regular memory addresses are in your local 1K space. And the memory of these first chips, they haven't got one meg of memory per core, they've got 32, 32K per core, I think. Sorry, back to the pro projects while we speak. So yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thank you.